نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد فعود بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب الشرح لي صدر ويسر لي أمري وحل القدة من لسان يفقه قولي ربي زدني علما اللهم فقهنا في الدين اللهم إني أسألك علما نافعا ورزقا طيبا وعملا متقبلا اللهم انفعنا بما علمتنا وعلمنا ما ينفعنا وزدنا علما وزدنا علما وزدنا علما اللهم صل وسلم على نبينا محمد Hi, Subhanallah, Subhanallah, this is a great blessing from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala that He's put Barakah in our time and given us the opportunity to connect. It's a weekend and uh, everybody has um, their own routines on Saturday, but Subhanallah, to take out this time for the Quran, for this beautiful Kalam of Allah, to understand it so that we can um, implement it and uh, live our lives by it. This is a huge blessing in itself. So let's start, inshallah, and uh, you can uh, keep your questions to the end of the session. We will try and um, wind up with the session 15 minutes before 3, so that we have a good 15 minutes to uh, take your reflections or questions or clarifications or anything. Right, inshallah. Let's start. So we are starting the series called The Gems from the Quran. And the Quran, in uh, the entire Quran is beautiful. SubhanAllah, it is the Kalam of Allah. It's beautiful. Every single word, every single uh, letter has so much of depth in it, SubhanAllah. Um, but we are just going to go uh, through the Quran, taking uh, certain ayahs, certain important lessons, so that we are able to connect through the entire Quran. So that we can go through the entire Quran in a way therein we can take up for the for the first time, right? Subhanallah. It's a journey for life. This connection with the Quran is a journey for life. It is we are a student, a talib ilm of the Quran for as long as we are alive. It just keeps getting better and better and better. Every time you read the Quran, it, it talks to you. It gives you something more beautiful. It gives you something more interesting it connects with you it pulls the strings of your heart it is like that it is a miracle it is the kalam of allah so it's 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 it is very very beautiful subhanallah this series we're going to be uh, touching on few ayahs from each surah so that we can take the gist of it and try and understand what is there in the surah that is for us to apply and as the first step Inshallah, inshallah, as we go forward, we'll go into greater depth. Inshallah, may Allah give us the tawfiq to stay connected, stay steadfast, and take the Quran and hold on to it completely so that it changes our lives for the better. Right? So this uh, being the purpose of the series, let's start, inshallah, with the first question. What is the Quran? What is the Quran? The Quran, of course, as all of you know, it is one of the heavenly books and the last of the heavenly books sent on the last prophet, Rasulullah wasallam. And it is a kind of scene. It is the final book that has everything filled with truth and guidance. And why is it sent to us? That's the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's his infinite mercy giving us the guidance that we need to stay on this path so that we can all achieve our purpose. Our purpose in our life is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And why do we do this? So that we can reach the goal of attaining Jannah. So this being very clear, this is the, there is no doubts about this. We all have, this is the common goal that we all have, that we all want Jannah, right? SubhanAllah. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his infinite wisdom and in, in, in his infinite mercy, he's blessed us with this book of guidance that can help us navigate our way through this dunya, through this world so that we can earn our akhirah we can earn our pleasure, the pleasure of our Rabb. We can earn Jannah. Right, subhanAllah. 
the Quran is the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is our Rabb. The word Rabb, am I going too fast? Sister Hajra, am I going too fast? No, this is good, mashallah. Uh, sisters, uh, do type in your answers uh, in your chat. If it's fast, we can ask Sister Kamila to slow it down a bit, but I think it's good. Uh, what about for you, uh, ladies? Sister Afia says, absolutely fine. Sister Sandra says, good. Okay, perfect. Mm -hmm. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. So what we are, we can continue with this space. We were talking about the word Rab. When we speak about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a Rab, we this word rub encompasses three beautiful meanings. It refers to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as our creator. It refers to him as our owner, complete ownership. And it refers to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as the sustainer. So this is where the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes. He not only created us, he not only owns us, but he is also the sustainer, which means he gives us the nourishment to live in this world, to grow, to become prosperous, to become successful. He gives us the resources for this. And when we talk about resources, he provides us with food, not only for our bodies, but for our soul as well. Right? And this Quran is the food for our soul. Right, subhanAllah. The Quran literally tra is translated as to read. Quran from the word, from the Arabic, in Arabic words of Freud, it means to read, right? SubhanAllah. And this, the kalam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the words and the meanings in this kalam is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself. And how did it come to us? It came through. The, the angel Jibreel al -Islam, on the heart of Rasulullah in the form of revelations, right? And it came over the heart of Rasulullah not in one go. It came over a period of 23 years. Over a period of 23 years. And the wisdom behind this, that it is a beautiful kalam and it is taken in small bite-sized baby steps so that we can implement on it, so that we can internalize it, so that we can live our lives by it. It was not given in one go. No, subhanAllah, as per the situation, it was revealed such that it could be acted upon. And so that's what we are going to do as well. We're going to take small, small, small bits of it, try and understand it, try and comprehend it so that we can change our lives according to it. Right? So, subhanAllah, this is Allah's kalam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taken the complete responsibility of preserving this kalam. So, absolutely, there is going to be no changes, no tampering, nothing whatsoever. SubhanAllah, SubhanAllah. This kalam is in Arabic. And why Arabic? Because it is the language of the people of Jannah. It is the language of our Rasul. It is the language of the Arabs on whom this Quran was sent initially. Right? SubhanAllah. So we claim that we love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We claim that we love our Rasul. Right? SubhanAllah. So it is, it is imperative on us that we understand what is in this beautiful kalam. It being in Arabic is not at all an excuse for us not to know what it is. Because if we live in a day and age, we live in the kind of technology where language is not a barrier. Right, subhanAllah. We all will make the effort to try and learn Arabic and read the Quran beautifully because there is, it, it, there is a reward in it for it. But to understand the Quran, Arabic is not a barrier. It can be understood if we put our mind to it and we make the intention that I want to understand what Allah is telling me. This is Allah's kalam and Allah is telling us in this kalam how, we supposed, how are we supposed to live our life? How are we supposed to go through our life? And we need this. Just like how you cannot go from point A to point B 
we've come to a we've come to a situation where we are so dependent on our GPS, right? Subhanallah. No matter where we want to go, we do plug in. The first thing we do as soon as we get an address is we plug in our point of from where we start to our end destination. And we basically look at the different routes that we can possibly take. This is natural for us, right? SubhanAllah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us the Quran so that we can stay on the straight path and the path that leads to Jannah. It is, it is already given to us. So subhanAllah, all we need to do is hold on to it and follow it. Right? Going ahead, this is this Quran, subhanAllah, it is, it, it. The Quran has a total of 114 surahs. Now, surahs is just chapters in the Quran and it starts from Surah Al-Fatiha and goes up to Surah Al-Nas. Now, Surah Al-Fatiha being the first surah, not necessarily the first that was revealed. The first surah to be revealed was, was Surah Al-Alaq. The first five ayahs of Surah Al-Alaq were revealed as the first revelation, while Surah Al-Fatiha is the fifth to be revealed in the chronological order. But the Quran has been given these chapters and uh, the sequence of chapters, and this is something that Allah had revealed to his Rasul, and this is how he read in his Salah so that his Sahabas followed it, and they got the sequence of what comes after what, which Surah comes after what, subhanAllah. Right? This being said, the Quran with uh, the total of 114 Surahs, Certain surahs were revealed in Mecca and certain surahs were revealed in Medina. So the so when you look at the Quran, you will see certain surahs which will say Surah Makki and Madani. So the surahs that were revealed before the Hijrah, before Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam migrated to Madina, before that the surahs that were revealed were called Makki and the surahs that were revealed in Madina were called Madani surahs. SubhanAllah. Right? So this said, Subhanallah, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he uh, he got these revelations depending on the situation he was in. It came to him as and how the need arose for. Right, Subhanallah. So starting off, we have Surah Al-Fatiha, which is the first surah of the Quran. Surah Al-Fatiha, this is like an opener. The word Fatiha, if we have to see it in Arabic, it is written with the letters Fata and Ha, which means Fata, which means to open. The opener, this is the opener of the Quran, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Surah Al-Fatiha is uh, something that was really loved by the Arabs. And the Arabs, they, as a tribe, uh, even we do that, but the Arabs as a tribe, whatever they loved, they gave it many names. Right, so they they love their camels, and so the camels had many names. When we go through the Quran, the camel is referred to with many different names. The same goes holds good with dates. They love their dates, right? They they love this 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 the fruit of the desert, and it's you'll see many names of dates in the Quran. So similarly, Subhanallah, Surah Al-Fatiha has many beautiful names, right? This is the first complete surah to be revealed. Like I mentioned, Surah Al-Alaq was the first surah to be revealed, but only the first five ayahs. And then the balance ayahs came at a much later time. But Surah Al-Fatiha, the seven ayahs of Surah Al-Fatiha were revealed together and they, it was the first complete surah to be revealed. Right, Surah Al Fatiha has many names. We are just going to touch on a few of them so you can kind of connect with it and try and remember it. Of the many names, it is called Umul Kitab. Umul Kitab being the mother of the Kitab, very aptly so. Right, it cannot be separated from the rest of the Quran. It cannot be except it. It is part of. It is a very very integral part of the Quran. It's the Quran is starts with it, so it is a, something which is inseparable, just like the mother, Subhanallah. So Ummul Kitab, it's called Ummul Kitab. Then it is called As Salah. As Salah 
Why is it called as salah? Because the salah, your prayer, is not completed without the recitation of Surat al Fatiha. No matter which salah you pray, whether you're praying the Farid salah or the Sunnah salah or the Nafil salah, whether you're praying two rakat or three rakat or four rakat, you have to read Surat al Fatiha. Right, subhanAllah. So it is a salah because salah is not completed without Surat al Fatiha. Then you just call Ashifa. This is beautiful. What does Ashifa mean? Surat al Fatiha is called Ashifa as in it is like a healer. It is like a healer. And there's this beautiful hadith which I'm going to read out to you. During the time of Prophet, وسلم, a tribal chief was bitten by a scorpion. And uh, he asked the companions of the Prophet to treat him. Now, the tribe was had not been on very good terms with them, so they agreed to make a payment for it. So one companion, one of the Sahabas, he recited Surat al-Fatiha and gathered his sal saliva and spit on the bite of the, of the scorpion. Now, the chief was cured and he paid with a flock of 30 sheep. Right, subhanAllah. And subhanAllah, this, this Surat al-Fatiha had this kind of a healing property that it removed, it did it removed the poison of this um anim, of this insect that bit this person. Right, Surat al-Fatiha has is a ruqaya in itself. When you have when you when you have pain in your body, or when you have a fever, or when you when you are just feeling tired. Just reciting Surat Al-Fatiha odd number of times. It could be one, it could be three, it could be five, it could be seven. Whatever, whatever you can to read it, to blow on yourself and to rub your hands all through your body. SubhanAllah, you will feel so relieved and so refreshed. It has the property of healing and that is why it is called Ashifa. Right, SubhanAllah. Anything you'd like to... Um, I wanted to tell the sisters that rukia means to cure. So, um, you know, the, uh, we can recite Surah Al-Fatiha many times and uh, cup our hands, like how Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to do, and then blow on it and then, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, what do you say? Uh, he used to just uh, pass his hand over his body, you know, as a protection. So uh, th that can also be done with Surah Al-Fatiha. Jazakallah khair, Sister Kamala. Surat al-Fatiha along with inshallah will come and I'm sure you you, you all know the Surat al-Ikhlas, Surat al-Nas, Surat al-Falaq. These surahs along with Surat al-Fatiha and, and the Ayat al-Kursi. This is a ruqayah by itself. All these surahs, you don't have to go to a big raqi to get this done. You can do this yourself. Anytime you're going through any kind of pain, any kind of distress, anything that is that is making you feel uneasy, all you need to do is read these surahs, blow it on your hands, pass it away over your body, or blow it into a um, into a cup of water and drink it up. Or you know that ways you are kind of you have this protection that you inbuilt. You you do you create the shield around yourself. So you know, subhanallah, you you really do not need to uh, look beyond the Quran itself is called a shifa, right? Subhanallah. So it has the healing for every kind of disease within it. It is for us to understand this, for us to apply into our life so that we can use the Quran, we can turn to the Quran, we can read the Quran for the sukoon, for the peace in our hearts and for the strength of our iman, which in turn makes us strong inside out. Right? One of the etiquettes of reading the Quran is to start with Tawus and Tasmiyah. And what is Tawus? Tawus is seeking Allah's protection. When we say, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Ar-Rajim, we say, I seek protection from the accursed shaitan, from, with Allah from the accursed shaitan. I seek protection with Allah from the shaitan who is rejected. Subhanallah. 
we ask this and it is it is imperative that we start our Quran recitation with Dawus because this is a command from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Especially when we are reading the Quran, when we are reciting the Quran, we want to take the Quran for the purpose it was revealed. We want it to affect our hearts. We want to apply it into our um, and make a difference in our life. And this is something that we this this Protection from the shaitan is imperative because shaitan, he knows that the Quran is precious. He knows that he's well aware that this is a kalam that can change hearts and that can give direction, that can, you know, keep us on the straight path. And so he's not going to be very happy about it. So he distracts us. He reminds us of things that we have forgotten to do or something on our to-do list just when we are sitting for the Quran. Just then the phone rings. Just then there is a message and you are like, let me just take this one thing. These are distractions. So it's imperative that we start our Quran recitation with was asking protection from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then we follow that with Tasmiyah. Tasmiyah is also called Basmala, which which is Bismillah rahman rahim wherein we say that we start reading with the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when we say Bismillah, there is the name of Allah, the, the proper noun of Allah, and Ar-Rahman and Ar-Rahim, Two beautiful characteristics of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So in this one small phrase, we have brought together three beautiful names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we need this. Allah's name brings a lot of barakah in our time. So this one hour that we have taken for this session, subhanAllah, with Allah's barakah, it can give us so much more, so much, so much to ponder upon, so much to contemplate, so much to take with us than what we have done in the hours that have passed during the day that has already gone. SubhanAllah. This is barakah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it is imperative that we start our Quran recitation with Tawus and with Tasmiyah. Okay. Moving on to Surah Al-Fatiha. Now like we said, we are just going to be taking the gems from each surah. So, Surah Al-Fatiha, as you all know, and you all must be reading in your prayer, it is a beautiful surah, and it starts with the word, Alhamdulillah. This is how it starts, right? Alhamdulillah is a very comprehensive word. It, in, it totally, it encompasses two things. The praise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, when we stand on our salah, when we stand on our musalla and when we start with Alhamdulillah, we are internalizing that we are truly grateful for this opportunity that we have had one more salah to have this conversation with our Rabb, one more salah where we can be grateful to our Rabb, one more salah where we can show our humility and complete submission to our Rabb. Right, it is we we start off with Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah for everything that has that we have been given, everything that has been destined for us, everything that has been planned for us in this life, everything that has been reserved for us in this akhirah. This is a kind of indication of our complete gratitude to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala and praising Him because He is deserving of all the praise. Right, Subhanallah. This is how we start. Surah Al-Fatiha. And Alhamdulillah, when it is said that when we say Alhamdulillah, it fills the mizan, it fills the balance, right? And on the day of Qiyamah, the best of mankind will be the Hamadun. And by Hamadun, is, it means the ones who do a great amount of praise of Allah. The one who, ones who say Alhamdulillah very, very often. These are called Hamadun. And they will be the best of mankind on the day of Qiyamah. And everything, everything in the universe praises Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in its own way. Whether it is the birds, whether it is the trees, 
they all praise Allah, the creator, in their in it, their own way. And we as human beings, we have been created as the best of creations. We are ashraful makhluqat. We are the best of creations. And subhanAllah, it is only right for us to be praising Allah, to be grateful for Allah, to be glorifying Allah. Right in this in the surah, Alhamdulillah, we have the uh, we have the ayah where uh, the first three ayahs, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, the Rub of the of all the worlds, Ar Rahman Ar Rahim, the most merciful, the most compassionate, Maliki Yomiddin, the one who is the owner of the day of judgment. All these, the first three ayahs, are an introduction to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, and Surah Al Fatiha teaches us as to how we should make dua. When we make dua, it's imperative that we praise Allah, we glorify Allah first. So this Surah Al-Fatiha, the first three ayahs glorify and praise Allah and mention his characteristics. Right, subhanAllah. And then we come to what we are getting at, the dua. Maliki yawmiddin, iyaka na'abudu wa iyaka nasta'in. It is you only that we worship and it is you only that we seek for help. Complete humility, telling, indicating that it is only you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that we are, we are in need of. You are the one whom we worship and only you can help us. And then comes our dua, which is this ayah. Ihdina sirat al We ask Allah for guidance because it is only Allah who can guide us. When we say ihdina, we're asking Allah to guide us. And this is a need. This is the biggest blessing that we can have. This is the best gift that we can have. Ihdina from uh, Huda, which means guidance. And is the same root as hadiyah, which means a gift. So it's the same It's the same root. In, in Arabic language, Arabic letters, they have something called the root. Right? There are three letters or four letters or five letters, which is the root of the word. And that kind of gives you the exact meaning of the word. Right? That is like the base word. Right? So, subhanAllah, the word ihdina uh, indicates that, you know, it is this is a blessing and blessing is a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ihdina guidance is of two types. There is a guidance which comes to you in the form of knowledge. Right? When Allah, when we ask Allah to guide us, Allah gives us knowledge, knowledge to understand things, knowledge to know about things. And guidance can all, is also in the form of the ability to act upon that knowledge. Right. So these two things are important when we ask for guidance. Just knowledge is not enough. We all know that knowledge that is not put into action is nothing but a burden. So we, when we ask for guidance, we are asking for both these both these uh, uh, categories, knowledge, which is required for us to understand and comprehend things, and the ability to act upon this knowledge. Now, why do we need this knowledge? <inaudible> why do we need this knowledge? So that we can stay on the straight path, right? The knowledge is the information that we need to know. And then we say that this knowledge, I cannot put it to use unless and until Allah gives me the strength. Allah holds my hand and makes me walk through it. Allah helps me to cross this, to cross this path of dunya so that till the end I am on this straight path till I reach Jannah. So we are asking for this guidance so that we can stay on the straight path. SubhanAllah, this is a dua, this is a beautiful dua of Surah Al-Fatiha that we all ask minimum of 17 times a day. That is the number of farz rakats that all of us pray in a day. More than that, when we ask, when we pray our sunnahs and then our nafils, we ask, we ask this dua again and again and again, asking for guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right, may Allah bless us with the with the right guidance to stay connected with this Quran, to stay connected with this Deen, so that he we are able to achieve His pleasure. That was Surah Al Fatiha. Moving on, we have Surah Al Baqarah. Surah Al Baqarah literally means the cow. Sister Hajra, can we go ahead? 
or um, anything uh, yes. to take a pause no this is good alhamdulillah sisters what do you suggest is suppose that good you can just type in the chat we'll do little bit of surah al baqara the chapter 2 today just yeah a few ayahs few verses inshallah uh, alhamdulillah sandra says good anisa says perfect alhamdulillah alisa says good Sisters, all this will be recorded and it will be put on the Embrace website as well. So you can go through it again. And if you have any questions, any words that you didn't understand, you can type in the chat or you can, you know, ask questions uh, on the WhatsApp group as well. And also uh, you can email us uh, your personal questions. So we'll be happy to answer it, inshallah. Jazakallah, Sister Kamila. We can proceed, inshallah. Oh, alhamdulillah. Surah al-Baqarah. Surah al-Baqarah being the second uh, surah of the Quran. This is this is the longest surah of the Quran. It has a total of 286 ayahs. And it is a Madani surah, which means most, most of it was revealed in Medina after the Hijrah and the revelation started immediately after the migration. Right. So this surah deals with uh, a lot of foundation um ayahs, a lot of foundation um, uh, ehkamats for the new Muslim ummah. The ummah had moved from Makkah where they were tortured, where they were put through a lot of difficulties, where they were not able to practice their iman, where they were not able to pray salah uh, openly, where they, were, where, where they had a lot of hurdles. Now they've migrated, they've come into Medina, they are starting uh, to, you know, embrace the religion completely. They are starting to, um, they are, they are going to be in, in a place where they are not going to be persecuted for their iman. No, subhanAllah, they are, they are free to do, to practice their religion. So now the surah is bringing in the, the guidelines, the responsibilities, the challenges upon the Muslims, the Sharia laws. The laws of worship, the laws of salah, the laws of psalm, of zakat, of hajj, the laws about family relationships, about social norms, all this together in Surah Al-Baqarah. It encompasses all these, all these uh, different, different categories, different, different um, uh, ideologies that are part of the deen, right? Surah Al-Baqarah, this beautiful uh, um, hadith, Surah Al-Baqarah is, this is what is said about Surah Al-Baqarah. Everything has a hump. And the hump of the Quran is Surah Al-Baqarah. Subhanallah, subhanallah. So here, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam calls it the high peak of the Quran. So it is said in another hadith that, learn Surah Al-Baqarah and Surah Al-Ali Imran, which is the next surah after Surah Al-Baqarah, for they are both brightly illuminated chapters. These are brightly illuminated chapters. And what will they do? They will come on the day of resurrection as if they are two clouds or a canopy, two canopies of shade or to a wall of decisive uh, birds. And what will they do? They will argue on behalf of their reciter. Salaam has encouraged the Ummah to recite the surah, Surah Al-Baqarah and Surah Al-Ali Imran, because they will come on the day of Qiyamah and they will argue on the on behalf of the reciter. Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has all, also said that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala said, recite Surah Al-Baqarah in your houses, for shaitan does not enter a house in which Surah Al-Baqarah is recited. SubhanAllah. This is the importance of Surah Al-Baqarah. Yes, it is long. Yes, it is a very long surah. But subhanAllah, the benefits of recitation of the surah is immense. And it is important that we understand what is in this beautiful surah. It has so many beautiful lessons. We understand what it what is there and we make it a routine to make it a part of our life. Right? To part of our recitation every day. Maybe a bit of it. If we cannot recite the whole surah, but definitely a little bit of it every day, because this surah has the ability to keep the shaitan away. There's some interesting facts about Surah Al-Baqarah. Surah Al-Baqarah, it is the longest and it's the most comprehensive surah of the Quran. The Al-Baqarah means the cow, and we'll get to the story of the cow in a while. 
it is in it is uh, um, is the greatest ayah of the Quran. It is called Ayatul Kursi. It is ayah number two hundred and fifty five of the surah called Ayatul Kursi, and this is the greatest ayah of the Quran. Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam has said, Allah appoints a protector with whoever presides Ayatul Kursi in the night. So it is. it should be one of our adhkars for the night where we recite Ayatul Kursi before we go to sleep. In this, in Surah Al-Baqarah, there is another ayah which is called the Ayatul Bir. Ayatul Bir is the ayah on Bir means righteousness. So this ayah tells you of different ways of how you can be a righteous person. Not just one, two, not just doing one thing or two things, but different, different, different ways in which you can attain piety, you can attain righteousness. This is ayah number 177 of Surah Al-Baqarah. And then there is Ayatul Dain. Dain means debt. Okay, this is the ayah of debt and it is ayah number 282. And it explains about the financial transactions and it also is the longest ayah of the Quran. It is a whole page of the Quran, subhanAllah. And then there are the last two ayahs of Surah Al-Baqarah which start with Amin al-Rasul. And these two ayahs, 285 and 286, they are considered as the most important verses in the sense if recited in the night they could be sufficient for the person who recited it subhanallah and these were the two ayahs among the other gifts that were given to rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam when he made the night journey and he went up to the skies this was this were these ayahs were given from the treasures from under the arsh so these were two beautiful ayahs and they are part of surah al-baqarah right moving on surah al-baqarah Starts with Alif Lam Mim, right? A'uzu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alif Lam Mim. These are called huruf al-muqattat. Huruf al-muqattat are uh, basically letters which are not read by joining them. They are broken. There is a break after each letter. Right, so these letters, subhanAllah, there are out of the 114 surahs in the Quran, there are 29 surahs in the Quran which start with these kind of letters. And these letters, each letter, it is mentioned in a hadith where we, where we are, are told about the rewards of reciting the Quran. It is mentioned that every letter of the Quran, you get 10 hasana. And by 10 hasana, we do not mean... Uh, Alif la mean as one word, but we mean that Alif is a separate uh, letter, Lam is a separate letter, and Mim is a separate letter, and each of them get 10, 10, 10 hasanas, which means altogether just saying Alif la mean, you get 30 hasanas, 30 rewards, subhanallah, subhanallah, right? So this is how Alif la mean, um, uh, this is how Surah Al Baqarah starts with the letters Alif la mean. And it goes on to say, Zalikal kitabu la raiba fi. Right? It means this is the book of, this is the book wherein there is no doubt. And it goes on to say, La raiba fi hudil lil muttaqi. Now in Surah Al Fatiha, you asked for ihdina sirat al mustaqi. And here Allah says, right in the beginning of the surah, this is the book. There is no doubt in it that this is the book of guidance. This is the book that will help you to live in this life. This is the book that will guide you. But whom is it as a guidance? For the muttaqin, lil muttaqin, the people of taqwa, the people who have who are God fearing. Now, categorizing the people, the beginning of the surah categorizes these three people: the mu'min, the kafir, and the munafiq. The first four. The first five ayahs of Surah Al-Baqarah talk about the moment. And a moment is one who is muttaqi, the one who has taqwa. And these five ayahs talk about what are the characteristics a person should have to be a muttaqi. Right? SubhanAllah. I think we will stop here. We'll, I'll be leave you at this so that you can ponder over it. SubhanAllah, we are at, we have 15 more minutes and we can take whatever clarifications you want. What do you say, Sister Hajra? Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Inshallah, we can stop here. 
Um, I think there is a question here as well. Um, I'm just looking in the chat. Uh, it says, um, uh, uh, you told us that, you know, uh, reciting Surah Al-Baqarah and Surah Ali Imran, the chapter 2 and chapter 3 of the Quran, they are the light for us on the Day of Judgment and they will, uh, you know, um, intercede on our behalf. So, right. uh, so the sister here, Sandra, is asking, what about the rivers that can't recite in Arabic? That's fine. Knows, Allah knows the intentions, right? Allah knows what we are capable of. And Allah is not looking at perfection at all. Allah is only looking at the effort, right? Subhanallah, subhanallah. So for you, for, for those of us who are trying, we are getting a double reward because we are not Arab speakers. Neither am I, neither are you, neither is Sister Hajra. We are not Arabs. Subhanallah. So we are all making the effort in our own way. The effort that you make to try and read, that's all Allah is looking at. So inshallah, you can start off, make the intention that I want to be able to read it. As for now, you can even read it in English. You can play the audio of Surah Al-Baqarah. Just to, just to get familiar with it, there are many ways of you know connecting with Surah Al-Baqarah. Reading is just one of it. Ideal way is for us to read and we get there inshallah. But still we get on with the journey. We can we can always listen to it. We can read it in our language so that we know what this is about. Jazakallah khair, Sister Kamila. That was a beautiful answer. Uh, Sister Sandra, did it help? Yes, it did help. Because I was uh, I was wondering if listening to the recitation and reading in my own language was Yes, yes, definitely, definitely. Allah knows, Allah knows what we are capable of, right? SubhanAllah. And Allah knows what kind of efforts we are putting. And Allah knows that we are doing this only to earn his pleasure. So that's that's huge for Allah, SubhanAllah. He He appreciates the, the, even the smallest effort that we make, Allah appreciates it. So SubhanAllah, nothing goes unnoticed with Allah, SubhanAllah. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. And also the thing that I love most about Islam is uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not see the results, but he sees our efforts. So that is something that I really love about Islam, uh, subhanAllah, because in this dunya, everybody sees our results. Uh, they want to see how much we have scored or what we did, but nobody sees our efforts. As non-Arabs, we have to put so much of effort in learning the language, in understanding the language. Uh, we have to spend so much of time with the Quran, subhanAllah. So for some people, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it easy and it, you know, it comes naturally to them. But for me, subhanAllah, I have I had, I had to spend a lot of time and I'm still doing it. And it's a journey, it's a lifelong journey for me to learn Quran, to understand Quran and to you know uh, implement it in our life. So. Uh, uh, and uh, I was telling you the thing I like most is uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looks at our efforts, not the results. So, Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. It is said, right, Sister Hajra, that you know, so the one who reads the Quran beautifully, he has a reward. But for the one who stutters, who stumbles, who finds it difficult, who puts in the effort, he has a double reward. Right, subhanAllah, he has a double reward because it doesn't come easy. He's putting in the effort. He wants to do it because he only wants to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's putting in, it's a, it's a jihad, it's a strife for him. And he's doing it because he wants Allah to be happy with him. He gets a double reward. I just want to, to say something quickly about that. If you don't mind, I just, yes, yes. with your answers, um, Alhamdulillah, I just came to understand, like, uh, as a revert, we tend to um, to see everything as, like, it's a, a, a math test, you know, like, if you do this, you get that, that point, you get that reward. But with Islam, um, uh, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most merciful and most generous, I came to understand that the efforts and the intentions it's um it's where the rewards are 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 um I don't know how to say it like it's the rewards are more based on int intention and efforts yes. Yes. more yes. than the actual um physical um 
Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. It's really up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's no, like you mentioned, there's no uh, math equation to it. It mm -hmm. really, it, it, it cannot be uh, measured. Really, it cannot be measured because this intention that we make, the sincerity of the intention we make is something that's done in our heart. And only Allah knows the depth and the secret of our hearts, right? Subhanallah, we can never let anybody else know. Allah knows what is in our heart. Allah knows deep down what is it that we are feeling and Allah rewards us according to that. Subhanallah, just like how Sister Hajra mentioned in this dunya, it's not possible to get it's not possible to get justice. It's not, it's it never equalizes. But with Allah, He does not, He He even knows like the uh, uh, the falling of a leaf. Can you imagine? The millions and millions of leaves, especially where we are living, and every season those leaves fall down. But not a single leaf is falling without the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's not falling down by chance. It's falling because Allah destined for it to fall. Right, subhanallah. And Allah can, uh, you know, when to that minute detail, subhanallah, Allah controls things. So imagine our heart. It is between his fingers and he's controlling it. And he knows what's happening in our hearts. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. Uh, Sister Anissa has a question here. Um, uh, Sister Anissa says, is there any difference in reward when learning to read in Arabic script versus transliteration? Transliteration is just uh, uh, in English, uh, Arabic written in English. Right. So is there any difference in reward? Um, there is a difference in the reward, but as long as the effort is being made, Again, we're coming down to the effort, right? SubhanAllah. So as long as we are making the effort and we are getting there, then we are rewarded for it. But uh, but it has its own special uh, reward, as in we mentioned that every letter, every, every single letter has a reward in Arabic. Now, in transliteration, we can't really do that, right? Because one letter is written as four words in the English language, four letters in the English language. Like when you write alif, it's written as A-L-I-F. Wherein in Arabic, it is just alif, it's just one letter, right? SubhanAllah. But again, we come down to the intention with which we do something, the effort with which we do something, the fact that we are getting there, that itself is, is huge. That itself is something that Allah is very appreciative of. Uh, Sister Anissa has further written that typed here, I have had several strokes and reading the script, I'm not sure I'll ever be able to accomplish so again, uh, it is the circumstances as well that matters, uh -huh. right? SubhanAllah. Uh -huh. Sister Anissa, the fact that you want to do it, the fact that you have the interest to do it, the fact that you have connected today, this itself is something, is a blessing. This itself is the fact that Allah has chosen you to be here. This itself you're getting rewarded for. Like I said, Allah does not let even the smallest of effort go in vain. So, subhanAllah, you will be able to accomplish it. It is just a matter of dua. It is a matter of time. And for Allah, nothing is impossible. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. We might think it's a big Herculean task, but for Allah, it's nothing. He can do anything He wishes. He can do. He can make us do anything He wishes. He makes us do things beyond what we think we are capable of. So, have the trust, make the dua, put in the effort, you will get there. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, can I add to that also? Um, yes, Anissa, yeah. if you aren't able to, and it's 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 entirely reasonable that you aren't able to, um, because of because of the damage that you've suffered with the strokes, Allah will reward you as if you memorize the entire Quran. Because you had that desire, so it's I know it's a dream come true and you might be able to, but if you, if you aren't able, if you try and you aren't able, don't, don't be sad because just the trying Allah will give you the entire Quran on your scale and you'll know it when you get to Jannah. Subhanallah. Oh, may Allah bless you and reward you sister. That was so beautiful. Subhanallah. Barakallah. Fikum. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. Sisters, any other questions? Um, inshallah, let us know. 
Uh, do we have all the sisters on the group, Sister Hajira, so that we can we have their numbers and we can kind of stay connected with them? Mm, we have them in our reverse group. Let me okay. post um, um, the WhatsApp group once again so that the sisters okay. can join in our group. Inshallah, let me just check okay. the messages. Copy link. Sisters, this is the WhatsApp group. Uh, if you're not in this group, you can join in. We'll be updating our programs, inshallah. Um, uh, and then you will, you know, uh, uh, you, you can, you know, uh, personally message us as well. Uh, you can personally message me and Sister Kamila as well, inshallah, if you have any more questions. Yeah. Uh, Sister yeah. says, Assalamu alaikum. This is the first time I've joined the class. Uh, wa alaikum salam, Amreen. Welcome to the group. Uh, I'm very happy that you're all here. And you're able to join us today. Alhamdulillah. Uh, does the class start at 3 p.m. on Sundays? No, it's on Saturday, 2 p.m. Central Time, 3 p.m. Eastern it's Time. Really, yeah, sorry? Every Saturday, uh, 3 p.m. Eastern Time. I'm doing these pants. Our classes. Yeah. Right, I can think copy in this color and this For color. this? To match, because I'm going to wear clothes that have this sort of color. Somebody's, um, Not the no. specific thing, this sort of color. Like, Mine is open. Is okay. Uh, sky baby bluish kind of or sometimes green too so my friend is saying this yeah it's pretty it's pretty basic everything i'll go with it it's, but it's really white though I okay like. well that's a lot more khaki than you think it is okay okay all right so subhanallah subhanallah that was that was good and sisters uh for the next session do sit with your mushaf, whether it is in English or whether it is in Arabic or whether it is in your own language. I will keep mentioning the number of the ayah that I'm referring to as we are going through it. So you can mark, you can, you know, maybe make a small underline or something so you are able to connect with the ayah. Right. So that way, as we keep moving forward, you will have a certain familiarity with the Quran. It will be it will be something that when you are reciting it, you will remember what we learned about it. So that way, you are able to build this connection and this relationship with your Muslim. Uh, that's a great idea. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Thank you. Jazakallah khair, Sister Kamala. Alhamdulillah. Uh, system uh, Lisa says, I like the ayahs you pinpointed today. Uh, Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. The Quran is really, really our guide. SubhanAllah. It's so beautiful. SubhanAllah. It, it talks to us. It gives us solution. It gives us uh, a feedback. It gives us a peace. SubhanAllah. So, you know, it's, it's there for us, subhanAllah. It's just up to us how we uh, strengthen this connection. And really, it's, it, when it comes down to that, it's not about Arabic. It's not about, it's just the Quran. It's just the Quran. And it is so beautiful, subhanAllah. Alhamdulillah. Um, uh, do you have any questions for the um, uh, audience today, Sister Kamila? Subhanallah, I'm I'm really really happy that everybody is opening up and you like you know shared in what you uh what you would like and uh, anything that you feel uh you know any ideas and anything uh, that you want in terms of improvement so we are open to it Subhanallah and um if there is anything at all that you want us to kind of add on we would love to do it idea is to uh you know connect all of us to the Quran. Because this is Allah's kalam and we need it, right? SubhanAllah. So it's a gift that we all have and we want to share it with everybody. SubhanAllah. So um, Sister Amreen says, uh, uh, SubhanAllah, SubhanAllah. SubhanAllah. So it, it, it's, it's uh, as I mentioned, none of us are like perfect because the Quran is so beautiful. Every time you read it, you find something new about it, but it's an ongoing journey. And every time we read it, we understand it further. We understand it deeper. So the connection needs to be ongoing and it keeps and we, and we keep moving forward with it. SubhanAllah. And the connection is amazing when you stand in salah and when you actually understand what you are reading, when you actually feel for what you are reading, subhanAllah, the, the, the 
quality of our salah becomes really beautiful. The khushu, the concentration, the focus in our salah becomes so beautiful. You're having this conversation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is our ch chance to connect with our creator. And subhanAllah, imagine if we know what we are saying and we are able to connect with what we are saying. I mean, that 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 itself is like so subhanAllah beautiful and such a big blessing. Ya Allah, like give us a tawfiq and the understanding of this beautiful kalam and help us to this journey that we have started today. May Allah bless us and with the barakah in our time so we are able to take this journey forward till we are till we complete it. And help us to stay connected so that we are able to earn the pleasure of Allah through this kalam. Jazakallah khair, uh, Sister Kamila. Inshallah, I'll stop the recording here.